Well, as it happens, the other day my dad was doing some garbage picking while he was working. He carries the mail for a living. And he found a, he found a couple of things that were interesting, including a set of Wharfdale speakers. Now, if you don't know what Wharfdale speakers are or much about the company, you ought to look them up. Suffice it to say, they're a very high-end brand of speaker. And it turns out that although these are a little roughed up, and somebody's been a little rough with this tweeter here, but I think I can fix that, there's a set of them, and there is nothing wrong with them. They work perfectly well. But the other things that he picked up, he picked up a Sony VCR that I have yet to look at, and he picked up this Pioneer auto-reversing dual-well cassette deck, which, despite what it looks like, it really doesn't look very helpful. I have no idea who owned all of this stuff, but clearly they weren't, uh, they weren't too terribly bothered by taking care of it. Although this thing doesn't look like much, and it looks like somebody might have been into it right there, and they didn't get the cover back on quite right, the uh, B-well of this cassette deck works fine, although someone broke the... Uh, soft eject mechanism over there, so you have to shut it kind of gently. The A deck tries to work, but it shuts down unexpectedly. And so, I'm going to try and see what might be wrong with this tape deck and whether or not it can be fixed. Now, our first patient, the Pioneer tape deck, is still sitting over there waiting its turn. But our first patient is this TEC R425 cassette deck. Now this is an auto-reversing cassette deck that somebody picked up years ago at a garage sale and it worked passably well then, although it was suffering from a bit of wavering audio. Just a very mild thing. Most pre-recorded tapes sounded fine. But most recently I took this deck out of storage because I was planning to fix it and I tried it and it was even worse than it had been. It wouldn't auto-reverse any longer and it really didn't want to play tapes at all. Well, it turns out that in an auto-reversing tape deck, of course, there are several there are several moving parts, many belts, a, a direction switcher so that the tape can reverse itself and go the other way, and usually something in a lot of these decks to flip the playhead around as well so it can go the other way. Anyway, there are two major belts in this unit. One of them is a uh, set of capstan drive belts, and, the, and it appears to be okay. It's a long, flat belt. The other one is the belt that actually drives the tape hubs either forwards or backwards. And that belt was all worn and distorted and flabby, and that could certainly result in bad playback speed. So what I did, there are places that you can order various and sundry tape deck parts from on the internet even to this day, and as you can see this tape deck is in a lot better shape than its Pioneer counterpart. I got these from Studio Sound Electronics in Indiana, and there's two belts here because when I did the math and measured the old belt, I found that with about 10% taken off, there were two belts that would have worked. This 5.6 inch belt over here, and this 6.2 inch belt over here. Anyway, I'm going to try the two belts, and whichever one results in better performance from the tape deck is the one that I'll leave in there. Now installing a belt in a tape deck, that can be where the fun really begins, especially in a more complex mechanism such as a dual well machine or an auto reversing machine. Although here it's pretty straightforward. There's a shaft on the motor right there that takes that belt, and then this pulley right here takes the other end of the belt. So installation of this belt should be pretty easy with just a little bit of help from some screwdrivers and stuff to spread the belt over the various places that it needs to go. Alright, my first attempt here is with the 5.6 inch belt and I've got it on that pulley over there and this pulley over here. So we turn this thing on and in this deck the motor starts turning immediately the moment power is turned on regardless of what the transport is doing. And things are definitely running in here. So let's see if this deck is running properly. We hit the play button and we've got turning of the take-up reel in there. Now if I hold the take-up reel, that ought to trigger the auto-reverse action. And it does. Likewise, if I hold this take-up reel, it should reverse again. And it does. It wouldn't do that before. So now, the big test is to put a cassette tape in there 
and to turn on that boom box over there that has a line input on it and see if this thing is playing the tape at approximately the right speed. Alright, seems like the pitch is a little low with that belt on it. If you're not sure, you can always make a cross comparison with another tape deck whose speed should be right. So let's try the other belt. Alright, now I have the 6.2 inch belt on there. Let's see how that sounds. I think that's a lot better. So this little cassette deck ought to be in great working shape once again. Now for this other one. Now before we get too far into this one, we just need to clean it up. Now this shouldn't require too much explanation, but it should definitely be unplugged and you should be sparing in your application of the cleaner so it doesn't seep inside the unit and possibly cause some more expensive and difficult trouble. Now one of the first things to do to any cassette deck that you're trying to revive is to clean the transport. Usually this means cleaning the pinch rollers, which in this deck there are two because it auto-reverses. Those are the two rubber rollers on each side there. The cap stands that, they, that the pinch rollers press against should also be clean. And then there's the playhead, or in a deck that can record, the playback and erasure heads, which is that little black lump there next to the playhead. These things can be cleaned using 91% alcohol, and although there are special swabs sold for the purpose, cotton swabs usually work fine as long as you're careful. Basically the idea is to get all the tape oxide off of the transport because it'll harm the performance of the unit and may even cause a tape eating episode if you're not lucky. Sometimes on an especially well used tape deck you might need to demagnetize the heads, but that's, that's really pretty uncommon for most of these. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this deck seemed to work fine, and I'm kind of concerned about the fact that that one pinch roller is way down much lower than the other one, especially since it's not that way over here in the other deck, because something could have broken. I don't know. But the way this thing acts, it took my putting two tapes in it to figure it out, because the controls for this unit are shared. Each deck responds to one set of controls, and there's a button that lets you select one or two. Well, it turns out, in a, in a full logic cassette deck, a microcontroller intervenes and lays between your pressing the buttons and the mechanics of the deck complying. Well, the microcontroller has a couple of sensors associated with it that make sure there's a tape in place, makes, it does a check based on how many holes are in the top of the tape as to what sort of playback or recording bias should be used. For example, this is a normal bias tape. It has no holes in the top. This one is as well, but it has some artifacts for holes in it that would trip those switches and tell the microcontroller to adjust its settings accordingly. What I noticed is that there's a set of LEDs behind this deck selection button. The B LED would stay lit up pretty well constantly, but the A LED would flicker on and off rapidly. I was soon able to discover that by playing with the, with the tape detection switches up here in the top of the unit, that I could get the same erratic behavior. This deck number one, or deck A, plays perfectly fine but will suddenly stop. And I believe it's suddenly stopping because the switch stops making contact and to the microcontroller's point of view, the tape has suddenly been taken out of the deck and isn't there anymore. And so it does the safest thing that it can and shuts down. There are a couple other things in full logic decks that regular logic, manual push button operated decks like this TAC one that I just fixed, don't have. There are a couple sensors in here that detect, you know, are the take-up reels turning? Are the cap stands turning? Is everything turning like it ought to be? And if one of those is not reporting, then the microcontroller assumes that the tape has spilled and shuts the transport down to avoid making any more of a mess than there already is. So what I think I've got to do is get inside this unit after cleaning the transport and see if that switch is being tripped reliably or if its contacts are somehow corroded or damaged or something like that. I'll also have to see if the fact that that pinch roller down there has dropped so far down if that's causing a problem as well.